This is a video about nozzles, specifically mist nozzles. And what we're going to do here is explain the differences within the nozzle, how the nozzle actually operates, and how you might be able to modify the nozzle to get it to do what you want it to do. Now, this video is not going to cover all nozzles. It's just going to cover the ones that are pictured right here. This is a style of nozzle that's quite popular, and there are a few other variations of the, of the nozzle, of the style. And I'll explain that a little bit, maybe show a picture or two as the video moves on. One of the main differences uh, on some different nozzles would be how the head is manufactured and how the head screws on and it, how the head comes in contact with the pin here. That's it, right at the top of the, of the orifice of the nozzle. First thing you can see here is that we've got three different types of nozzles. This one here, you can see three pictured, this one here, and this one here. This is a slip lock, a quick connect type nozzle that will go into a one quarter, one quarter inch quick connect type fitting. These other two are a 1024 screw type threaded fitting that goes into a piece of tubing. And this is the 1024 inch uh, thread. And you can see that there's a very small little rubber gasket there that helps it seal. The main thing we're gonna be talking about today is these springs. You can see there's different lengths spring thickness and the tip itself, how the tip works, the different sizes of tips that you can see, and how the check valve, the ball on the check valve, interfaces with the seat and how that works. First thing I want to point out is the tip itself, this device right here. You can see that this one sticks out a little further than this one and this and this one right here. This one's, we could say, almost flush. This one's sticking out a little bit. And then this one right here is sticking out a bit. Now, this picture is really not a picture. It's part of a video, so you're going to see some movement. And what I wanted to show right here is that I'm pushing in on these nozzle tips to make sure they're all the way in. So the spring is seated on its seat. I go to the smaller one and do the same thing. Now you may ask yourself, why are these sticking out at different lengths? Well, this one actually has a wrong, the wrong size spring in it, just to show you that how far it can stick out with the wrong size spring. These two probably have the right size spring, but they're just uh, the way the pin is made and maybe the length of the spring, they're sticking out. This one is sticking out a little bit further. Now here I'm going to take apart this bigger nozzle to show you what's inside of that. And I think what we're going to see here, the main point I'm going to make is that the spring on this one is a lot thicker. You can see that the, the diameter of this particular spring here, and now if you look at this one, this one's a lot thicker. So there's different tensions or different spring pressures that are created by the different thicknesses or the how, or how thin the, the spring is. So that's the idea behind what causes these nozzles to start opening up at different pressures. The smaller spring here will open up a uh, nozzle at about 80 PSI where you get a full flow through it. This particular heavy gauge spring, it's at about 250 PSI. Now you can see that here there is a longer spring that is light gauge. And this is a shorter one and here it is again. Uh, and this is a longer heavier gauge spring. So there are short and long and there are light and heavy gauge springs. And the reason they have short and long is depending on how the nozzle is made. This nozzle right here actually takes a short spring because of the way it's made. These take short springs but this larger one here that is used that has the filter in it takes a longer spring. But the most important point I want to make in this whole video is how these springs, these spring check valves, work at different pressures as the pressure increases or decreases within the pumping system. Now here I moved along the video and I'm showing the spring ball and pin removed from those slip lock quick connect type, type fittings, type nozzles. Now you can see that this spring is a little bit longer than these two. So really, uh, like I said earlier, that the, that one did not have the right spring in it. But you can see that this particular pin, the way it's manufactured here, has got a little bit more length than this one does. So you know, why that is, I don't quite know. But that's just to give you an idea that there are those type of things. And my best guess is of why it's 
it's that way is because this is a pin that has a large head on to it that is used on a larger orifice nozzle. Larger orifice nozzles move more water so therefore there's going to be more water traveling through the core of this nozzle and they want to make sure that all that water gets passed and maybe there's some restriction uh, that goes on with the nozzle that this helps get the water to the to the orifice itself now let's get back to the heart of the movie and how these spring springs operate now i moved ahead in the mo movie here to show some nozzle tips you can see we've got a an orifice right there and we've got an orifice here and we've got an orifice here you know each of them has a different size you can see this is a 0.8 millimeter orifice that hole is quite big and that orifice goes along with a pin over here like this and then uh, this is probably a 0.2 millimeter maybe a 0.15 millimeter I can't quite see the number maybe it's a three uh, but that goes with a smaller pin like this one right here so when you put these nozzles back together let's say this uh, check valve assembly pin goes back into this nozzle and this this uh, orifice head gets screwed back on the tip of that pin goes right on the tip right on the middle of that hole of that orifice in fact these pins have little laser cut slots in, in them at angles and as the water comes past and goes to this tip the water is swirling a little bit because these laser cuts in the tip of the pin and that actually causes the mist as it comes out of the nozzle to swirl a bit you see it it spins around a little bit and what that does is help the moisture absorb into the air so once this nozzle is all put together what happens is that this head with the orifice in it puts a slight amount of pressure on the tip of the pin so that means the spring is being compressed a slight amount and that this ball ball check valve is at its seat at the bottom of the nozzle body itself so as water pressure builds up coming into the bottom of the nozzle through this thread here it starts to build up pressure and it has to overcome this spring pressure here that's holding the ball valve at the bottom of the, the seat so in this case we have a light spring an 80 80 psi spring and as the pressure starts to rise, the ball starts to lift off its seat and allow some water through. Now at first, if it's when it first starts to crack, there's this element of called pressure drop. Where is all the pressure drop from, from 80 PSI coming into this nozzle to zero PSI when it comes out of the orifice of this nozzle? And that varies with the spring and how much pressure is put on it. So as soon as it reaches a point where it starts to crack open all the pressure is dropped across the ball here and the seat inside this the nozzle body not much is coming out of this orifice here in fact just a little sputter might be coming out a little spit or even a little bit of a stream might come out so you have to increase the pressure a little bit more for this ball to lift off of its seat enough for full pressure to go past the ball and get to the actual pin itself and that's when you have mist now in an 80 psi spring like we have here it's not actually at 80 psi that this thing starts to open up it's actually about maybe 20 30 or 40 psi that it actually start, starts to open up but you don't get a decent mist until you reach around 80 psi and i'll say that again around 80 psi because it's all just involves the the characteristics of this spring and how much pressure you have coming through it so let's say you got 120 psi pump it reaches 80 psi we got a, a good spray coming out and then the pump maxes out to its 120 psi and we've got a nice spray that's coming out of this uh, particular nozzle now as you shut the pump off the pressure will de decrease in this line and the same thing will happen that you'll have a nice spray until the uh, the pressure coming into the nozzle reaches 80 psi and as the pressure decreases because of more mist coming out of there the mist deteriorates it doesn't look very good anymore it becomes into a stream then it becomes a sputter and then it finally shuts off and where it shuts off will be around 20 30 35 psi and you can see that on a gauge if you have a gauge hooked up to your line now the same is true with the thicker spring but it's at a different pressure rating 
So this is a 250 PSI spring. At 250 PSI, we might have a halfway decent mist coming out of the, the tip of this nozzle right there. Sometimes it takes 275, sometimes it takes 300 PSI to get a halfway decent mist out of it. Now it is not a real good quality mist yet, but it's enough that it is a mist. You need to get up into 350 PSI range, maybe even a 400 PSI range to get a halfway decent mist out of this heavy gauge spring. But the, the same is true when you shut the pump off for the heavy gauge spring. The pressure starts to go down as soon as it gets to 300 PSI, uh, 270 PSI, the, the spray, the mist starts to deteriorate. 250, it's not looking that good. You get to 225, it starts to do a little bit of a stream. And maybe at, at 225, it, it shuts off. It's completely shut off. But one of the advantages of a higher pressure system is that happens a lot faster because it's a lot higher pressure. So the, the water is being pushed through this line. Uh, you got a decent mist. You shut the water supply off and the water goes down and this check valve just closes quicker than it does on a lower pressure spring. Now that comes, it brings us to the next important point. Is which, it's a point that we saw at the beginning of the video and that is how far this pin is sticking up past the body of the nozzle. Now I move past uh, or back to the beginning of the video and here's this same nozzle that we were talking about and you can see that this pin is sticking out a little bit further than it has to be. And what I mean by that is that when this head goes on, it's going to push onto this pin a little bit and it's going to cause it to compress a bit and put a little bit extra pressure onto that spring. Now, if you take a look at this nozzle, this is about the place where once you put this head on there, it'll put a little bit of pressure on it and then it'll close. And, tip, and really where it is, is once you put the head on, it'll compress the spring right to this point where this angle on the pin is. So it'll push it, push it right to that edge there, and that's where it'll be. So the point of this is, is that if you have a, a pin that sticks out a little bit, that's going to operate at a little bit different pressure. This might be a 100 PSI type nozzle, uh, slightly, just a slightly higher pressure that it needs. So the whole Point, one of the other big points I want to make, you can modify this spring a little bit if you wanted to, to get the pin to go down lower into its seat. Right here on the pin, you could take a small little nippers and nip away just a slight amount of this particular spring uh, or, an, or another spring and get that seat, get that pin to rest a little bit further down. So that's going to change the characteristics of the nozzle. It's going to open up uh, at a lower pressure. But as soon as you cut too much off of that spring, and then this nozzle pin happens to go to right to the edge of this angle here on the, on the manufacturing of it, you get it to there or slightly lower, well then the nozzle head that when you screw it back on is not going to have any pressure on it at all. And the ball valve is not going to have any pressure on its seat and you're going to have a nozzle that operates at, at zero PSI. So it'll, it'll start to try to spray right away, and then when the pressure is shut off, it'll go down to zero, and there won't be any check valve operation at all. So this cutting of the spring is, is really important if uh, depending on what type of pressure you have in your system, and if you do want some check valve operation. So if if you get a nozzle and uh, it's sticking out like that and it doesn't seem to operate, you know, maybe you've only got 70 PSI, 70 or 80, and it doesn't seem to operate, you could go in there and nip a little bit off there and get it to uh, recess a little bit more and you might get this nozzle to work. Or you can just nip a little bit more off yet and you don't have any check valve at all and then you'll still have a, a nozzle. But you can see to a degree uh, low pressure checks aren't really very effective because they do still spit and sputter a little bit and they do hold back a little bit of water 20 30 psi but you need 80 psi and again to bypass enough water past the check valve this is the spring action and to get a decent mist now that's all i really wanted to cover in this video i've, I've actually talked enough but that's it for now uh, thanks for watching have a good day bye